All right, well now to our series, Parenting in the Pandemic. And this morning, an eye-opening look at the very real struggles facing millions of Americans these days. There's one group, though, that has been bearing much of the burden. We're talking about moms. Yeah, mothers across the country these days juggling so much and that have had to give up their careers to focus on the needs of their family in many cases. Stephanie Rule sat down recently with four moms to hear how the coronavirus pandemic has changed their lives. Awesome job, dude. It's the reality of this pandemic. Mothers everywhere taking on more for everyone else and less for themselves. Do you feel like you're allowed to be unhappy? No. <laughs> You have moments where you break down and you cry and you feel like you're not doing enough. Three quarters of moms say they're mentally worse off in 2020. What has the stress of this been like for you? It got to a point where I thought I had a stroke. And so um, it turns out it was stress. I actually went to my doctor and I'm, I'm like, I need help. I had to go see my doctor as well. And I'm on anxiety meditation. Like millions of parents, Tina, Kelly, Tawana, and Lauren all have one thing in common, burnout. Recovering now, so much women and mothers' um, labor is hidden. So I think men and dads are getting a glimpse of it now, but I, I, I think that it, it ultimately falls back on moms. You're being pulled in so many different directions that you're failing almost a little bit at all of them. Wow, Lauren, have you felt that way? Yeah, kind of all the time. And now that my work has sort of transitioned where I'm not working as much, you know, there's definitely a part of me, whether it's a source of pride or anxiety about what my career will look like post COVID. Lauren Sean, a 39 year old ER doctor from New York, made the decision this year to put her two sons ahead of her career. The way that working moms are sort of portrayed in our culture and our media is that they're super women, they somehow are magically doing it all themselves. Okay, guys, let's do some bedtime reading. Labor reports show that married women have left the workforce at rates four times faster than men and overall account for the majority of COVID-related job loss. Well, you know this word. You do know this word. COVID survivor Tawana Nelson is a single mother to seven-year-old twin girls. Like Kelly Latore and Tina Sherman, she says there is no choice but to be all mom all the time. Tawana, how much do you miss alone time? Oh, so much. I put the girls down, and when I close the door, that's it. I don't expect them to come out of their room, but sometimes they do, and I lose it. This is my time. I definitely do the shut the door <laughs> thing, so you're not the only one. I'm definitely the one that's like, no, really, I'm off duty now. How are you getting through it, Tawana? i starting eating healthier. I started doing yoga. Nobody here is drink is eating junk food and drinking. Like I'm the only one. Yeah, no, no, and and drinking. Okay, like oh, yeah. Stephanie, you didn't ask about the COVID pounds that I put on. Like I'm oh, trying I'm alone here. I've been wearing the same sweatpants for six days. Having conversations like this, does it make you feel more connected? It does. It does. It makes me feel like I'm not alone and I'm not crazy. I recognize that um, we are all living and doing the best we can to navigate this pandemic. I really try to give myself, my, my family, my friends grace and encourage them to give themselves grace. And Stephanie joins us now. Steph, it's such an honest and important conversation that so many moms, so many parents are having these days. What advice is helpful for them to try to keep in mind right now? Well, I, thank you guys. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to um, share this segment because I myself have been struggling with this for months and working with the, the Child Mind Institute. And right now I'm actually still wearing those very same sweatpants and having this conversation. <laughs> I'm, la I'm going, oh my God, I have them on right now. It's so important to have this conversation. And the number one thing I learned was to try to minimize the guilt we're all feeling, right? There's so much that's out of control. All we can do is try our best, right? Work hard on ourselves, but don't be so hard on ourselves. And if you look at social media, and if you're looking at the mom's chat at school, you start to feel like you're failing at everything. You're not. Do the best you can and stop punishing yourself for not doing everything. That's the number one thing. And then I would talk about what Dr. John Torres said earlier about self-care. And self-care, not in this, you know, Calgon, take me away spa sort of way, 
But because we're with our kids 24 hours a day, we don't have any, any designated time just for ourselves. So you have to make that time, that's really important. And the last thing I would say is ask for specific help. Don't wait until things get so out of control like I often do and then just go off on your spouse or your kids. Tell your employer or your kids or your partner what you need. My 14 year old's laundry was all over the house 24 hours a day and finally I said, you do your own laundry or you have to just deal with wearing dirty clothes. So ask for specific help and hopefully you'll get some. Yeah, a good reminder to be grateful, not just to moms, but all those out there who are carrying an extra load these days. Steph, for thank sure. you so much. Yeah, great advice thank for you. all parents. I'm putting my sweatpants back on as soon as I get home, by the way.